Welcome everybody to episode on Reels Productions. How are you guys doing today, man? I'm your host, Alok Kura, back here with another episode of the Cool Predictions. And hey guys, you can see that I got a new I got a new studio. You know, I got I got the dripped out studio now. Uh <laughs> I got an upgraded studio, man. Uh just implemented it. And this will be the first game preview uh prediction I do of this season uh for college football. So just get ready for it, guys. I got a jam-packed episode of the cool predictions here. Uh, where I'm going to be going over Ohio State versus Oregon um, on September 11th, uh, which is next Saturday. Um, so let's get into it, man. So let me give you a quick little rundown of what we're going to be doing. So first off, I'm going to just go off some uh, Ohio State week one recaps, just recapping some of what they did last week, um, the good and bad. And then we're going to do Oregon's too. And then after that, um, I believe, yeah, it's uh, keys to victory for both teams in this matchup. Uh, players to watch in the matchup, and then I'll give my score prediction, then we'll get out of here. Uh, so let's get into it, man. So we're going to go right to the Ohio State Week 1 recap. So let's go. Welcome, everybody, to the Ohio State Week 1 recap. Uh, they played Minnesota last week, um, and let's get into it, man. So first off, last week, they did all right. Ohio State, they did all right against Minnesota, considering they had a new, fre- they had a new not freshman QB, a QB, new QB, and C.J. Stroud, uh, Justin Fields to to the Bears now, um, but had never started before. And in the first half, Stroud he struggled, and a lot of Ohio State fans can say that he did. Uh, he was just uncomfortable. He didn't have a lot of confidence in the first half. Um, towards the end of the half, he started progressing a little bit by little bit. Um, but one like right when he came out of the locker room in the second half and first drive. He looked like a whole different player. Uh, he looked like he had a lot more confidence in him, a lot more just just uh, confidence and uh, comfort in him. Um, so I don't know what what happened at halftime, but he definitely manned up and came out the second half and played pretty dang good football for one half uh, for the second half. Um, and I believe, yeah, his stats, 13 completions for 294 yards, uh, just falling short of 300 yards in his first start. Uh, four touchdown passes and one pick. Um, and that one pick, it was like off a tip or something. It wasn't a hundred percent his fault, but it could have been thrown better and accurately at the wide receiver. Uh, that one uh, pass, but that almost three hundred passing yards, four touchdown passes, only one pick in his first start. That's pretty decent. That is pretty pretty decent. Um, then another player that stood out to me in that Ohio State recap uh, that I'm going to be doing right now is Mayan Williams. I don't know if I'm saying that right, but uh, their freshman running back. Man, when I say, when I watched that guy, I saw a future running back for Ohio State. I saw the future Ohio State running back starter right there in him. Uh, He, when I, like I just said, like, when I say he was good, he was good. Uh, And what stood out to me about him was how he was able to accelerate and get to the edge to break loose and to be able to, in his explosiveness, just his, his overall explosiveness, to be able to hit the lanes that his offensive line was providing him. Um, and that's he took advantage of a lot of those lanes that his offensive line gave him and just exploded through them. And I loved I loved seeing what he uh, brought to Ohio State last week. Uh, he finished the game with 125 yards, one touchdown. And that was only off nine attempts. And this is still his first ever start, his first ever college game. That's that's pretty impressive. Only on nine attempts. Hey, that's telling you something, Buckeye fans. Um, and then obviously the last guys that stood out to me. You got Chris Olave and you got Garrett uh, Wilson. I mean, that, those are two guys that obviously are gonna stand out all season because they are standouts. Uh, so the one place in that game where I could say that they could have done better at was they just the Buckeyes they just struggled uh in this game with their linebacker core and some of the other positions on defense like defense overall it was mainly because they had seven first time starters on their defense and I mean that's I mean if they're first time starters seven that's that's hard to recover from like right away uh so I think as as the season progresses and kind of keeps going farther into it I think they're gonna start getting their groove, tweaking some of those, some of those things uh, that you need to tweak to have a good defense. Because they, uh, Ibrahim, um, 
uh, Minnesota running back. They gave up pretty good running yards to him. I think it was like 130, 140 yards before he got injured in the third, I believe. Um, and I think they're going to have to work on their run defense. That's just something they're going to have to work on because I said their linebacker core is going to be something that they have to work on as well. Uh, but that's all I saw from the week one recap for Ohio State. Uh, now let's go on to the Oregon recap versus Fresno State. Um, and let's get into it, man. Welcome, everybody, to the Oregon Week 1 Recap. Uh, they played Fresno State Week 1. And now I'm going to tell you guys what I thought about their performance. So let's get into it. So now Oregon, they played, I just said, Fresno State Week 1. They played pretty good in the first half. <laughs> in the first half, they played pretty good. In the second half, they came out like they did not want to win the game. Like they they did not want to win that game like this, the defense kind of struggled. Uh, the offense struggled. Like, they were inconsistent a lot in the second half. Um, and some of the be- biggest reasons why was because the run game wasn't wasn't consistent. It uh, was not consistent. C.J. Verdell, he only had maybe eight, six to eight carries going into halftime. And then they would stretch out. They stretched out his attempts again in the second half. He only ended with, I think, 18 uh, rushes Um, he had like 74 yards which isn't terrible but I think they got to utilize him more and I don't know why they didn't last week Um, I know they probably wanted to give Anthony Brown some more like uh, completions and whatever but the thing was he only uh, completed 18 passes I don't remember how many like attempts he threw for but I don't think it was like outside of 30 um or like uh 30 at 30 at all I think it was like inside 20 attempts or like inside like you know you know what I'm saying but I I and Anthony Brown too like he said uh he just transferred over from Boston College this was his first start he said in his press game uh post game uh press conference that he he basically agrees with what I'm saying right now because he said that they were not firing on all cylinders on the offense, and he said that was really sloppy. And you cannot be sloppy against a you can't be sloppy against Ohio State defense. That's a big jump. Fresno State, Ohio State, like that's a big difference. Even with seven uh, first time starters, like I mentioned earlier, that's going to be starting on that uh, defense for Ohio State. That's still better than Fresno State's. I'm I'm sorry, but Fresno State. Ohio State, they're two different uh, skill levels, and I'm sorry, Oregon, but if you're struggling with a team, like, if you're struggling with a team uh, of that caliber when you should be competing higher than that, uh, I mean, shoot, man, if you're, if you're like, struggling uh, to beat a Fresno State team, come on, man, uh, I'm not saying that they're not going to win this game, uh, it was due because they were just very inconsistent on offense. And then another reason was, another reason was, like, dude, like, K- Kayvon, Kayvon, uh, he went out, I believe it was, it was first or, like, early second quarter, um, and that really helped, that, sorry, helped, no, that really hurt uh, Oregon's defense that game, and we still don't know if he's playing, we just got an update from uh, Mario today, uh, Oregon head coach, about the injury, uh, they said that it was day to day right now and that they would get back to us around Tuesday or Wednesday. I don't know when you guys are going to see this video, so it might already be like official that he's playing or he's not playing. Uh, but right now when I'm recording this, uh, he is not playing. It's a day to day for him right now. Um, and if he doesn't take that trip to Columbus, Ohio, I, I'm, I don't know if I can say that they have a chance in this game. Well, they have a chance, but I don't think they're going to win this game. Uh, because Kayvon is a huge part of this defense, a huge part of this defense. And I know every single Oregon fan and their mom was having a heart attack when he was on the ground. Like, there's no way. Like, you know, like a guy that big going down on the ground week one, that's not a good sign, um, especially for, like, their defense. Like, it's, it's just not at all. It was an ankle sprain. I I forgot to say that, but it, everybody watching this, Oregon f- or Ohio State fans should know that, um, but yeah, uh, I think just next week, uh, Oregon just got to come prepared and fire off all cylinders on their offense, 
Um, but then that leads me on to the keys of victory for Ohio State in this game and then Oregon. Uh, so let's get into those. Welcome, everybody, to the keys of victory for Ohio State in this Ohio State versus Oregon game. Uh, so let's get into it, man. So first off, Ohio State, they need to be able to run the ball effectively like they were able to last week with Mayan Williams. If I'm saying that right again, my bad if I'm not. Uh, but they need to be able to, like with some of their other running backs too, like Travion or uh, Henderson. I'm not bad. I don't know that either. Um, but just they need to be able to run the ball consistently like they were able to last week. And I think they can uh, easily benefit and uh, take over the game with that as well. Um, and especially if Kayvon for for uh, Oregon doesn't uh, come on the trip, I think it's going to be... I think it's going to be, like, easier for them to run the ball this game. Um, and then next, Stroud, need, they need, he needs to be comfortable. He needs to be comfortable the whole game, not just one half. Um, and I think that's another huge part and key part of this. And I think it's going to be hard if if Kayvon is playing. I think it's going to be harder for him to get comfortable because he knows in the back of his head he's got a guy who can split through your offensive line in a second, in a snap. Um, so he's just got to be prepared mentally, um, this game and just being comfortable and confident in his offensive line, um, and just trusting them fully. And I think that's one of the key, uh, things because against Oregon, I know, like I just said earlier, like they, they struggle with Fresno state, but I think this isn't going to be the case this week. I think Oregon, uh, recovers. I think their offense is firing on all cylinders. Um, they're running the ball more effectively. Um, but yeah, if, especially if KV, Kayvon is playing next week, I think it's going to be harder for, uh, Stroud to be comfortable and confident, but Hey man, I could be wrong, but yeah, that's one of the hugest keys right there is if you don't got a confident and comfortable quarterback in the backfield, it's not, it's not going to be good. Um, and then next, like I was just saying, like, uh, Ohio State's O-line, they need to be, they need to be prepared and able to hold up against Oregon's pass rush which is pretty decent with Kayvon. Without Kayvon, not the best. But with Kayvon, deadly. Um, and then also, just last but not least for Ohio State, the defense just needs to be prepared because I know C.J. Uh, Friedel, uh he he is a nice running back. He, he really is a nice running back if you give him the opportunities uh, that he needs and just like the off the line and the blocking that he needs. He can be a deadly running back. Um, you saw that 2018-2019. Um, not so much last season because it was COVID year, um, for everybody and it was harder for everybody. Uh, but I think this is a huge redemption season for, uh, CJ Verdell, but let's stay on topic. But, uh, their defense just needs to be ready because like I said earlier, I'm going to recap that they're going to have seven first time starters on their defense. If I'm a, if I'm a Buckeye fan, that kind of concerns me a little bit because you got seven guys that have never played before, um, and some of them will pan out. Yeah, some of them will pan out to be good players this game. I'm not saying that every single one of them is going to be terrible and that all of them should just get benched for another player or whatever. Uh, you know, like, it was with Maya Williams, too. Like, he, he did pretty nice. I mean, that was his first ever game. Like, you never know until you can see them play, actually. Uh, so I'm, I'm just excited to see all those things in motion. Uh, for Ohio State, just seeing if they are able to uh, keep those and do those keys of victory and accomplish those things. Uh, but now let's go on to the keys of victory for Oregon, and then we'll go on to the player watch for both teams, for Ohio State and then Oregon. And let's, so let's get into it, man. Welcome, everybody, to the keys of victory for Oregon, the Oregon keys to victory in this game versus Ohio State. Uh, so let's get into it, man. So first off, Oregon has to be able to pass. Their passing game needs to be on point this game, uh, which it wasn't last week. Uh, Anthony Brown only threw for 170 yards, which is not going to cut it against Ohio State, and I know that for a fact. There's no way, unless you're like Lamar Jackson running for like rushing for like 200 yards. There's no way that's going to cut it. Um, and then next, their run game needs to be consistent this week. Their whole offense, for a matter of fact, needs to be consistent this week. It was not consistent last week against a way lower opponent that they're going up this week. And if it cannot be if it is not consistent, there's no way they are winning this game. There's no way they're going to win this game. Fresno State's defense is not better than or uh not Oregon. Ohio State's defense. There's no, it's just not. Uh and it's gonna be a lot tougher of a challenge for Oregon 
Uh, so they need to be firing on all cylinders on offense. They need to be consistent. They cannot be. They cannot be doing these uh, three and outs constantly. And they were. They had like three, four, or somewhere around that uh, three and outs against Fresno State, and that cannot be the case against Ohio State because you keep doing that. Uh, even with Cave Cavon, uh, CJ Stroud, he's going to get more chances to get more comfortable. Um, so, hey man, you just gotta, you gotta be, you gotta be firing on all cylinders, man. Keep the pressure on Stroud. That's another thing. Just keep the pressure on Stroud, like Kayvon, their defense. They need to be, they need to be getting through that offensive line as fast as they can. Uh, because CJ Stroud, if he gets comfortable, you saw what happened against Minnesota last week. It was, it was a dumpster fire for them pretty much. Uh, when he got comfortable, he was a way better quarterback. Um, and then next, Oregon secondary needs to be ready and not get burnt uh, with uh, to Alave or uh, Wilson this week. They cannot do that. They cannot let up 60 or 80-yard touchdown passes. They need to hold them. They need to, and it's going to be a tough challenge for their secondary. It really will be. Um, so they just got to come prepared with that too. Because that is one of the best uh, duos, not the best, but one of the best duos, wide receiver duos in uh, college football at the moment. Uh, so they got to be ready. They got to be prepared uh, because I know it's going to be a tough challenge. I'm not expecting them to fully shut them down, but if they can somewhat uh, limit their targets, then that would be huge, you know, and not being able to get burnt on like silly routes, you know. Um, the next. Uh, like I was just saying earlier, like the pass rush just needs to be good. Getting Stroud uncomfortable, that's the next thing. And then, last but not least, Oregon's defense needs to be good on rushing. Like, uh, uh, what you want to call it? Rush defense, rush defense. They need to be good at rush defense this week. Um, like I said, they have multiple running backs. Master Teague, they got, they got a few other two, like, that can run the rock effectively. Uh, so if one guy goes down... You're gonna have another challenge. If that guy goes down, you'll have another challenge. So they just really need to be prepared this week for the run game because I think uh, Ohio State is gonna be using that and utilizing that effectively. Um, so they really need to be they really need to be keeping an eye out for the run. Um, I know they're watching a crap ton of film on the run right now for them. Uh, so they just need to be prepared for that as well. But that's all the keys to victory. Welcome everybody to the score prediction of this Ohio State vs. Oregon game. Uh, before I get into my score prediction though, let me read the over-under which is 62 and a half. Uh, and I'm going to say the over and I'll explain why right now. Uh, like The biggest key overall uh, is for both teams, I would say for Oregon, it needs to be keeping CJ Stroud uncomfortable and not confident, un- unconfident if that's a word. Um, and then for Oregon, for Ohio State, it would have to be uh, just stopping their offense, like making it be inconsistent, uh, getting in the back, like just playing great coverage on the wide receivers, um, and just the run game needs to be uh, shut down as well. Just just that. Um, but those are the biggest keys probably for both teams. Um, and even, well, the one player that I think is going to impact this game the most is if Kayvon plays for Oregon. Uh, if he does, then I think they win because I think he puts a lot of pressure on C.J. Stroud and makes him very uncomfortable and does not trust his ability um, in the pocket. And I think that leads to a lot of three and outs and a lot of turnovers for Ohio State this game. Um, even without him, I say it's close, but I still I, I don't think that they win the game. Uh, even if even if the, the offense is going good, I still don't think they win. Uh, if uh, Kayvon plays, so I think just he has that big of an impact on on Oregon. Um, so the final score, I would say, if Kayvon, I'm gonna have to if Kayvon is not playing, I'm gonna say 42 to 38 Ohio State. Uh, but if Kayvon does play, I'm gonna say final score 45 to 34 Oregon in an upset over everything, uh, because nobody is picking really Oregon right now, um, and I think they're the underdog that could do something. If they are firing all c- cylinders, uh, so those are my two scores. If Kayvon does not play, forty-two thirty-eight Ohio State. If they do, if he does, forty-five thirty-five thirty-four Oregon. Um, and again, I'm taking the over on this, which is sixty-two and a half. Uh, but yeah, guys, 
If you guys enjoyed this episode of the Cool Predictions, please like and subscribe. We really have to the channel a lot. We're on the road to a thousand. Uh, we've just been blowing up, man. It's been cla- crazy, bro. Ble- bless God, bro. It's, it's been crazy these last few months, bro. Like we've grown so much. Uh, we're so close to that mark, man. And if if you're watching this video and you enjoyed it, uh, please please hit the like button. Please subscribe, man, and tell us. Tell us what we can do better in these episodes and what we can do better on this channel. If you have any video recommendations you want to see from us, just let us know in the comments, man, uh, because we would love to do them for you guys because we we like uh, we like uh, what you want to call it, uh, taking suggestions and uh, making the community feel heard. Uh, but yeah, guys, that's it for your host, LL Cool Brad, and we'll see you guys in the very next episode of the Cool Predictions. We out. Peace.